ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm Rochelle Travers and this is The Leader. Could electric cars be the answer to London's clean air problems? The Evening Standard has launched a major report setting out the road to an EV future. As part of our Plug It In initiative, we're aiming to help clean up the capital's air by getting more drivers to embrace zero emission vehicles. We've enlisted experts alongside representatives on infrastructure and the motor industry to help set out a realistic plan everyone can work towards. Stephen Armstrong is editor of Plug It In. So Plug It In is a section of the Evening Standard which is looking at, in theory, you could say it's looking at electric vehicles. It's it's more complicated than that. What, What we are aware of is that in this, you know, largely medieval a little bit regency city that was never designed for motor cars there's a lot of issues that cars are causing but also there's a lot of ways the city was thought about when it was originally built which didn't include cars so we can see that there is a revolution taking place and this revolution is happening anyway i mean the arrival of electric vehicles is an inevitability it's not an inevitability because our government said so it's an inevitability because the eu say so because the united states say so because china says so even if britain said we don't care about fossil fuels and evs all of the cars in the world are going to be pretty much fossil fuel free in the next 10 years so it's coming it's happening we thought well it's an opportunity to imagine a different city it's an opportunity to think about what could a city be like if it was quieter, if it was cleaner, if it was healthier, if it was more peaceful? And what other ways could we think about organising the city? When you look at London, Zone 1, that's pretty much where most of the traffic that's diesel emitting, that's fossil fuel emitting is. And yet there's very few private cars there. They're mostly commercial vehicles. So how could we work that more coherently? Also, we're in a situation as a country where we need to find ways to make money, really. I mean, there is only one factory in the UK that makes electric vehicles, and that's the Nissan factory up in Sunderland. Miles away from London, for one thing, but also Nissan asking for tax breaks from the government right now, because otherwise they may end up pulling Nissan Leaf from the UK. All of the cars, really, that we're making are diesel or petrol cars, which means our car industry is going to die unless we get to grips with this. Stephen, the Evening Standard has just launched a white paper on this. Can you just explain the work that's gone into that and walk us through some of the recommendations? So we wanted to work out how we would go forward. What are the really big problems? Why London, which is one of the you know, pioneering cities in the world when it comes to EVs, and I think we don't pat ourselves on the back enough about that. Uber London is the highest EV fleet that it has. And that's down to a number of things. It's down a lot to legislation like the congestion charge, like ULEZ. And it's down to what Londoners want, which is that they are very open and welcoming to to riding in EVs. So we've got a lot of good things going on in the city. But at the same time, things are beginning to stall. We're not buying as many cars as perhaps we need to if we're really going to make this change possible. We're not buying enough cars to, to to directly save our own lives because, that's, as I'll talk about in a bit, the, the big problem, immediate problem with fossil fuel cars is that they are killing us. So we wanted to work out what the obstacles were. And a lot of the obstacles are price really, and complexity. If you want to fill up a car with petrol, it's not hard. If you want to charge your car, the options are complex. You can charge it at home, then, then there's if you are going to do that, there's are you going to install the rapid charger? Do you charge overnight? What kind of uh, parking options do you have? Can you run a lead across the pavement to your car? Do you have to have a garden or a driveway? Then if you go out to a public charger that has VAT on the electricity there, which makes it 20% more expensive to charge your car on the street than it does on the, in your garden, that there are premium rates on some chargers, the faster the charge, the more expensive it is. Yeah, there's loads and loads of little bits and pieces. Each of these different charging providers have different cards and different systems of payment. It's really complicated. The idea that you would just go out, plug something in, charge your car and go away again is how it needs to be. Otherwise, people are going to go, well, why? Why can't I just do it the way, same way I do it with, with my petrol car? So there's a lot of stuff about how simple changes, really simple changes. 
in parts of Scotland, in uh, some cities in the North Coventry, you have these flat charge electricity rates. There's no reason why London can't have that. There's no reason, which just makes it much, much easier for commercial and for all of us just to plug in, charge up and drive off. We're also really interested by the technology that can make it easier. We also want to try and get people into cars. So we want to look at ways that the evening standard can work with car companies to get Londoners trying out EVs and see if there are any, you know, see if you can remove the fear, I guess, of what is this car? Why is it so different? It's not actually that different, but a little bit. We're aware that the government at the moment, at the moment, seems to be rowing back on some of the support it's been giving not just electric vehicles, so it's ro rolling back on some of the um, financial support, it's rolling back on some of the road tax support, it, it's also rolling back on some of the benefits it's giving startups, and those are the things that are feeding into the EV economy. So we're saying that we need to make this easy, we need to make it cheap for people, we need to make it simple, cheap, straightforward, we need to make it as easy, if not easier, to have an electric car as it is to have a petrol car. And right now, it is a little bit cheaper and much, much more complicated. So we outline a lot of these ideas and a lot of suggestions from a lot of the great and the good about how simple it can be. And it really can be so simple. I mean, I found an astonishing uh, piece of information that someone from National Grid pointed out to us, which is that the majority of the electricity that we consume throughout the day is generated by wind power. Wind power is nine times less expensive than gas but because of the way the government has set up the electricity charging system we have to pay for all of our electricity at the price of gas well this makes no sense why would this be so there are there are straightforward flips in legislation that can work to make an electric car much much cheaper but also deal with the cost of living these things all go hand in hand Let's go to the ads. Stay there to hear more from Stephen Armstrong about why EVs could be the key to cleaner air in London. Welcome back. As we were working on this uh, in January, we realised we were it was coming up to the 10th anniversary of the death of Ella Adu Kissy Deborah, who's a, a nine-year-old girl who died and was the first person to have air pollution as the cause of death on her death certificate. And she lived near the South Circular in London. At, at her inquest into her death, there was a, a doctor who said that her death is the canary in the coal mine, signalling the risk to Londoners from the toxic mix of pollutants that we are all receiving from fossil fuel cars. Now, Ella was an extreme case because she had a very, she had very vulnerable lungs for a particular number of reasons. And her mum has spoken out about this, that she, she didn't know that the medical profession didn't know that they weren't informed. But the truth of it is that if you are operating in any way within the five parked cars length, so imagine the length of five parked cars, that distance is the distance where the nitrogen dioxide is pumping into your lungs. And that nitrogen dioxide can induce asthma. It can, in the case of school children in particular, if your kid has, has got a school playground that is within five park cars length from a busy road, their learning ability is going to be damaged. Their growth potential is going to be damaged. By the time they're 16, they will be underperforming compared to their peers simply because of their school playground's position. You know, we're in a situation where the outcomes for joggers, the outcomes for school children are poor as a result of this it will dramatically damage their lives but also about 4,000 Londoners a year they're estimated to be dying prematurely due to the effects of air pollution so it's I mean the, these grim numbers are the kinds of things where people switch off I used to be a smoker I used to get a cigarette packets and on the side of it I used to get a you know lung diagram showing what it was doing to me and I would say well whatever but these are people's children. The people, people's children are being poisoned by cars is essentially our way, our way into this. So given that, given that ch people's children are being poisoned by cars without realising it, how can we, as a paper, work to make London's children safer? And finally, is a fully electric vehicle future in London actually achievable? So I think the Evening Standard shows that this kind of radical change is not only achievable, but has been achieved. So back in 1952, the Great Smog of London, severe air pollution caused by 
you know, the use of coal, the use of variety of sort of factory outputs. And that particular pea super, 4,000 people died with, at, down to the fog and 100,000 were made ill by the smog's effects on human respiratory tract. And that was, that was just a few days in December 1952. Now, the standard was part of the campaign to bring in the Clean Air Act of 1956, and that in, that would seem it was you know from here that would seem like great we did it. It's incredibly complicated. It involved changing the kind of coal we use. It involved changing the the way that fires were used. It involved changing the, the sulfurous quantity of different kinds of materials. Closing down power stations. It was a huge project, absolutely enormous project. It gave us gave us obviously uh, the Tate Modern, which is a win win. So the the point is. It can and has been done. If you read the right paper, if you read the coverage that we've got in, in the standard, you'll see the details broken down. The point is, big picture, we as a paper, we as a city, have faced catastrophic problems of pollution and almost insurmountable obstacles to changing it. And we've changed it. And it's got better. It's got better within a few years. You know, we're a city that can do stuff. We're smart. We're entrepreneurial. We're collaborative when we want to be. And there's no reason why we can't make this better. You can read more about Plug It In on our website, standard.co.uk. And that's it from The Leader. This podcast is back on Monday at 4pm. <laughs>